So two things. Um, one is that in the field back to small vessel disease and the whole issue of cognition after strokes. So stroke causes major physical problems, but it also has a big impact on people's ability to problem solve and, you know, remember things. And, and patients often complain about a sort of fuzzy head and these sorts of things. And that, that aspect of stroke has been somewhat neglected, but is now becoming um, much more focus of attention. Um, so first of all, we're understanding much more about how frequently it happens and who who is likely to be at risk and what sort of things we might be able to do to um, identify the risk and then perhaps manage their recovery in ways that are um, better for them. Um, it, it's interesting that cognitive problems after stroke is is on a number of surveys, the number one concern of many patients with stroke at the moment, and also of um, families or relatives or people who are in a high risk category for having stroke. So, so that's a really important area. Um, uh, so that's um, an area of big progress and trying to understand more about ways of um, you know, whether secondary prevention drugs that we currently use in stroke are actually helping the cognitive side of things as well, or whether we really need to put more effort, emphasis on, um, you know, improving lifestyle um, characteristics, or whether there are some novel uh, drugs around which have different effects on the lining of the blood vessel, whether they might be a more effective way to go. So, so that's one big area. And another big area is the increasing use of, um, you know, implantable, stimulating devices, which may help recover things like swallowing. Swallowing is a big problem after stroke. A large proportion of people, particularly those with more severe strokes, have swallowing problems. And that's, that's, that's just a, a, a major medical problem. It's also a major lifestyle problem if you are able to get home, but you're having trouble feeding. Um, people can end up with a swallowing tube or with a um, gastric feeding tube, which just massively impacts on quality of life. Um, so there's increasing evidence that um, stimulating the pharyngeal muscles after stroke in the acute phase may help to um, improve muscle function and get people off tubes and so on faster. Similarly, really interestingly, stimulating other specific um, of the cranial nerves, um, there's some evidence of you know increasing rapidity of recovery of things like arm movement. Um, and there are also uh, trials now progressing, looking at what's called ischemic preconditioning, um, where you try and uh, improve the function of uh, a limb um, by giving a little sort of ischemic stimulus almost, you know, blowing up a blood pressure cuff, basically. Um, so, so if you like, this is something where you're taking the brain, which is like you know, the human equivalent of a computer, and you're applying a whole lot of what are effectively technical gadgets to it, you know, to try and improve recovery. Uh, there are also um, attempts to, you know, things like spinal cord stimulation or um, robotic exoskeletons, which might help people with their mobility. And um, I think we'll see a lot of big changes over the next few years because of, you know, these electronic gadgets are becoming much more... Um, you know, smaller, implantable, more manageable, um, much more sophisticated devices.